Welcome to Light of the Southwest. We have another exciting show for you tonight. We have two of our distinguished hospital board members with us. We have Don Hallmark and one of our most recent board members, Kathy Rhodes. So uh, good to have you guys this evening. Thank, Thank you. We're looking yes. forward to learning about our uh, local hospital district. And we're and excited what, to be here to tell you about well, it. And I'm y'all. just the newbie, so we can, we can turn <laughs> it over to, to Don. We're going to lean on Don a lot yeah. tonight. Is that's that right. right. Well, that's right. We're grateful that you are now a part of that group, Kathy. Well, thank you. I'll thank you so much. We really are. And uh, Don, you've been serving on the hospital board for? Four years. So four years. Going in my fifth year. Okay. Fantastic. Well, before we really get started with them, again, you know, as, as things have truly begun to move out at GLC once again, to accomplish the will of our Heavenly Father, we want to encourage you in partnering with us. You may remember that uh, that is the way that GLC or primetime broadcasting, as it was known prior, has always been driven. This is a body of Christ effort made of partners from, uh, you know, water bears to uh, uh golly what are some of those other groups that we have can we post all those but you know starting with our raindrops uh, a monthly supporter from a, anywhere from a dollar to thirty dollars a month guys that's that's not uh, but about five cups of coffee these days i don't believe but our raindrops our water bears our operations you know we're at a we're at a position right now that we're really working to put a lot of our our transmitters uh, back in service and updating those. Uh, we've had some things running at uh, less than full capacity and very excited about uh, a gentleman that stepped up to help work on some of those things. But there's more to be done. There's more to be done. And we want to invite you to partner with GLC so that we can continue to bring you the Word of God, and information based on truth. Let us move forward without any further ado. Don, Kathy? Yes. Uh, well, Kathy, I saw some pictures the other night, and that's one of the reasons I really wanted to get the two of you on. I saw some pictures where you were being sworn into office. Is that correct? That's correct. We had a retreat this last weekend in Marfa, and I was sworn in officially. Okay. And uh, it was videotaped, and on my campaign uh, page, which is going to convert to my District 7 page. Okay. So, um, yes, and, and Don was holding the Gideon Bible as I was being sworn in. Um, always have to have that Gideon you've Bible out there. You sure do. Well, you've, you've so. kind of been a part. You and uh, your fine husband, Eddie, have been a part of Gideon's for how many years? Oh, gosh, 20, 22. 22 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, we may talk a little bit about that tonight. But mm -hmm. again, many of you, I'm sure, uh, are familiar with the Gideon Bibles. You've, you've probably picked up one and read them in hotels. But Kathy and her husband have been a part of that work for many years, uh, have traveled all over the nation, I guess. Yes, uh, mainly to New York City. New York City. Yes. Uh, for the annual conferences, is that what they Well, do? it's annual Bible placement. It's called a Bible Blitz. The Bible Blitz. And we Blitz. go in there uh, for a week to 10 days every year uh, in September, and it's always geared around uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Okay. Uh, we always have to um, take the time to uh, respect the fact that a lot of the facilities are, are owned, Jewish-owned mm -hmm. facilities. And so we, we respect that, and we... Um, have our Bible placements considering the holidays. Awesome. And uh, we go in for that time period. We go to nursing homes, nursing facilities, care facilities, AIDS facilities, Rikers prisons. Island. Prisons, don't you go into prisons? Rikers Island Prison, which mm -hmm. is the largest prison facility in right. the world. There are 13 uh, active full prisons on that facility. Wow. They're talking about, uh, the mayor is talking about dispersing that facility into um, local jails, which in my estimation would be a mistake. There would be very little control and a lot of ill things could take place when you yeah. do that. But Rikers has always been near and dear to my heart. 
Many, mm -hmm. many men and women have been saved on Rikers Islands because of the, the, the uh, Gideon Bibles. So. Wow, what an amazing work. It is. Well, Don, you have been serving for our Ector County Hospital Board for four years, you say. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what's that been like? Uh, nothing that I thought it was going to be. Obviously, it never is, I'm Surprise. sure. Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, we went on to, to make a difference after some bad things had happened, and okay. we've done it. And uh, we, we absolutely have the best Christian staff, the best Christian administrators. Uh, it is a complete... You know, we had Christians there before, but right now we're working as Christians to make the patient better. And wow. that's that's from start to finish. That's all it's where it healing be about. starts. That's isn't right. It? So it's been amazing. Uh, we have uh, we, we've gone from uh, one and a half to two hours wait time in the ER to eight minutes. Are you serious? Eight minutes average. Tom, oh, that is. Did, did everyone hear that? They have taken the average wait time at Medical Center Hospital right. from one and a half to two hours. One and a half to two hours to eight minutes. I've never heard of that. Well, we just looked at it and that, there was a gap. Okay. And we eliminated What's the gap. Wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. Right. Eliminated you, the gap. You, and, you identified a problem yep. and went in and solved it. Kristen mm -hmm. Timmons is our CNO, uh, another great fine Christian woman and mm -hmm. she is uh, absolutely amazing at everything she touches. If you tell her no, she can't do it, it's going to happen. So we <laughs> tell her no a whole lot. Yeah. But this, this was her baby and uh, it, has, it has made everything go better. And you know, we, we're talking about a hospital that was a zero star rating right. when I got there and okay. I think we're at a two star rating right now. And wow. Those, those rating systems are, are are difficult because right. the information runs two or three years behind, even four years behind. Okay. So what you might see right now is a two star. We won't see it till two years from now, but mm -hmm. uh, the information is still happening and it's real. Right. And what, what that means to the patient is, is that they're getting everything they need to be taken care of in a timely fashion, especially at the ER level, uh, in the rooms also. and. You know, with COVID, we have we have knocked so many home runs. Really, in the COVID well, place. Well, tell us tell us a little bit about that. What does a home run look like in the COVID? A home run looks like teaching challenge. the rest of the world how to administer the vaccination at a large, large level. Mm. We had we had the events out at the football stadium, mm -hmm. and we did thousands and thousands a day. Mm -hmm of inoculations and mm -hmm. when when the inoculation is what we're hoping to have as the solution mm -hmm. we got to get that done and mm -hmm. these guys just put a, a plan together and uh, Rus Russell set up uh, a format told mm -hmm. Kristen she couldn't get it done and of course she broke every record that the, could be broken with the mm -hmm. staff and the help and mm -hmm. the sheriff's department and, you know everybody just come together and made it made it work like glue so mm -hmm. those are the kind of things that it's ha they're happening every day at Medical Center mm -hmm. Hospital right now, and at the end game is always about making the patient more comfortable and getting them home faster and better. The service they need. That's right. The service they need. That's exciting. So, Kathy, what in the world prompted you to engage and enter a race for hospital board? <laughs> you know, um, it was God. It was just God. Okay. Um, Don posted something on his Facebook. <laughs> And all I asked was, what area and what does it entail? And at that moment, and <laughs> fo going forward, I had people coming to my door. I had phone calls. I had uh, text messages. I had so many contacts from so many different people in different directions. It was overwhelming. Um, and at that point, I, I began to pray about it and visited with my husband. He looked at me, which I think was one of the miracles. He looked at me and said, you need to do this. And you know my husband. And that is saying a lot because um, he, he likes to have me, have me close and, and able to help him. Well, he was ready to, to say, it's, it's time. You it's need to good. do this. It was, 
in itself, um, uh, I think, an act of God. <laughs> but then from there, um, there were so many things that pointed me in this direction. One of them was Kurt Cameron, uh, his series, uh, Campfire Revival, American Campfire Revival, that was going on online. And as I was trying to decide, he kept every night I was hearing um, that if you're being sought out for government, you need to go forward and do this. Every person from the the smallest position, smallest elected official, all through all the way through the presidency, Amen. it's important that we put Christians in those positions. Yeah. Night after night, he talked about the Constitution and the founding fathers, which I'm a descendant of of several of the founding yes. fathers, and so it was something that God just really laid on my heart. Yeah. And it evidently it was His plan when I would when I would. Uh, get discouraged, I would pray and I would say, you know, Lord, you, you brought me into this. You gave me all the signs and all the, all the opportunities and open doors. This is your race, not mine. I'm stepping back. And uh, the fact that 71% of the people that voted, voted for me shows that there was, there was a lot that God had his hand on. And, uh, and someone sitting next to me predicted that 70 or 71 percent, <laughs> which was also pretty amazing. So um, I had good godly people encouraging me and working with me and behind me, pushing me forward. I think the other guy sitting here is one of those good godly people that was encouraging me. So, uh, yeah. Well, so that's what brought me into the position. Kathy has just made an excellent point, and we don't want it to stop here. When you have that functioning to step into an active role in our political arena, as a believer, don't step back. That's right. Step forward. We are where we are in America dealing with the issues that we're dealing with today, not only at the national level, but our state level and our local level and the reason we're there is because individuals that are believers have been told that we are not to engage in that arena That's right. but that is not what made this nation great what made this nation great i think we will all agree it are men and women that knew the word of god and stepped up and stepped out for the Word of God to be the foundation upon which this great nation was established. Well, that can only happen and can only be perpetrated with individuals that are believers and knowledgeable of God's Word. So don't back up. Take the example that these two individuals have set forth for us as believers they take out of their daily schedules, busy schedules, just like all the rest of us, and are giving of themselves selflessly to impact our community for good, to, to bring forth an emergency room setting where there's only an eight-minute wait. Now, that's, that only happens when people care about people. Is that right, Don? That's Dawn? right. And you know, the other part of that, I remember when Pat Robertson ran for president. Yes. And he didn't yeah. win. No. That's right. But amazing things happened on that. Yes. Amazing things come about that. I've got a friend that ran for Congress. Didn't win. There you go. There but you go. Great things happened through that. God's, God's not going to put you out there if he's not going to use you. Right. Exactly. Well, and, win or lose. And, and you know, in that race, and I, I, perhaps you're alluding to the race that I was personally in last year. Uh, and I was, I was amazed, and you've heard me say this, I was amazed at how many professing believers said, you know, you, you just ought to be, uh, you preach pretty good, maybe you ought to just be in a pulpit. You, uh, you don't need to be in this <laughs> political arena. Yeah. Well, you know, what we're trying to break down tonight and obliterate as a, as a theme and as a thought is that we as believers are not to be engaged in these arenas that affect so many people. Because... We need to be engaged. That's right. So, hallelujah. 
You Thank know, you both. It, it was believers that established this country. Absolutely. It was the belief in Christ that um, allowed us to have the republic that we have. Not a, not a democracy, not a democracy, but a republic. Amen. And, you know, God guided those people here, uh, my ancestors, from across the pond, yes. as they say yes. in England, because they were being persecuted. Absolutely. Um, and they were Unable being oppressed. to they worship were, God. That's right. That's right. And unable to freely worship. They were told exactly. what they would worship and exactly. how. And they came over here for that religious freedom. They established it. And now it seems like we've given it away. And that's why uh, Christian people, Christians should stand up. We should go forth and we should be called and we should answer that call and not back down and be strong and be forthright. We should, we should look toward the future and know that God is behind us. He's Amen. got our back. He's covered over us uh, with a protective covering, and we should go out with confidence. Absolutely. And you know, Kathy, that really uh, uh, brings us to another great point. Kathy is also very involved, a significant part, in the Western Conservative Summit that mm -hmm. has been held Gosh, how many years now, Kathy? Oh, I believe it's 13 years yeah, I now. It's, I, I believe and, it's in that range. Yes. And we oh. didn't get to meet last year, so we've got kind of a subdued meeting this year. Okay, a little bit different. In mm -hmm. fact, if you caught one of uh, one of our MMTV Breaking Chain shows here, oh, I'm going to say uh, two months ago, mm -hmm. we were interviewing, I was interviewing Jeff Hunt over in Fort Worth, who is one of the orchestrators of... He's the executive director of uh, Western go. Conservative yeah. Summit. Jeff Hunt, the executive director of Western Conservative Summit. And we were interviewing him over at the Fort Worth Stockyards. And, uh, and he, was, he was telling us that this year is a little bit different. They were not going to go for the total shutdown That's right. as they did last year. And they were, he was traveling around to different venues like the, like the stock show. That's right. And then he was going to be over at the, the slopes the next day catching yeah. some skiers. And then uh, fly fishing. And then fly fishing. Yes. And, and, and so they did all of their virtual filming. Yes. They're going to have a portion that's virtual. And then uh, for those of us who will be at the hotel ballroom mm -hmm. in Colorado, they'll have live. Mm -hmm. And they'll have some, some live speakers, which you can see virtually. And that's the exciting part about it is that you don't, if you don't want to get on the airplanes or wear the mask mm -hmm. for how many hours traveling, you can stay home and do the virtual. Uh, the virtual is, um, as far as I know, it's free. You can mm -hmm. just log in uh, and, and watch it at uh, your leisure, mm -hmm. uh, in your jammies if you want to. Yeah, there you go. You know, and that's kind of nice, especially since Brenda just had some surgery, I, I surgery. think. Yeah. My, my lovely bride had and, that last week. And it's going to be very exciting. Well, it is. And, and let me tell you, when, when we talk about Western Conservative Summit, what we're talking about are some first-class, top-notch individuals that are engaged for the well-being of this nation that have the right. common conservative Christian perspective that that we are talking from tonight. Yes. And uh, you this, want to give us some of those names, Kathy? Well, the, the Judeo-Christian base of the summit comes from the fact that uh, Western Conservative Summit is a sub-entity of Centennial Institute. Centennial Institute it's is the of, think tank of Colorado uh, Christian University. Okay. So this is put on by a Christ-based university and one of the most conservative in the nation. Yes, it is. Um, some of the names in the past we've had, oh, everyone from President Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Charlie Kirk, Brigitte Gabriel, um, I'm just kind of going mm -hmm. through one year at a time. Right. Frank Gaffney is always with Centers for Security Policy, is always one of our annual speakers, and he will be available at this year's summit. Mm -hmm. um, Andy No, who was assaulted in the, the in riots the Seattle, or the riots. Seattle situation, he will be there in person. We have had so many phenomenal speakers other than that, like Ben Carson mm -hmm. has been there. Um, Oh, golly, uh, Bobby Jindal was there for mm -hmm. uh, uh, several years ago. We have coming up Louis Gohmert, um, uh, let's see, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West was recorded. Yes. I think you were there for that recording. You yes. were in, it was in 
uh, at the rodeo, and Louis Gohmert was Louis at Gohmert that was at recording. The rodeo with us, yeah. Uh, yeah, they did. We were in one of those fun boxes out right. at the AT&T Stadium. That's right. Yeah. And uh, then they'll have um, various politicians that have been involved in the the election this past year. The young lady that was elected from Colorado, uh, who has been chastised for carrying her gun into as self defense into Congress. Um, you know, we also, uh, along this same line, we interviewed Jack Phillips yes. over there. And, and you may remember Jack uh, was, the baker, was yes. the baker that took his stand on his cake baking business mm -hmm. and refused to, uh, you know, bake a cake uh, for a gay marriage and uh, came under great assault. Now, we know that uh, that ultimately advanced to the Supreme Court. Three times. Three times, and ruled in Jack's favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the fight's back on in Colorado. And he will be there in person again yeah. this year. And, uh, and he so. makes great cakes. I'm telling you, <laughs> when, when I first met Jack about yeah. 10 years ago, when all this started, I began to buy family birthday cakes from here and uh, from in Texas, and uh, I would call Jack and say, we have this birthday coming up, this is the theme, could you do a cake, here's my card, and yeah. then my sister would go pick him up for her family. Wow. And we've supported Jack in that manner, and then yeah. also helped with legal funding, legal sure. aid. But he's always up there to give report he on what's happening. Precious, he is wonderful, he is, sweet man. He is as humble a man mm -hmm. as I guess I've ever met. Mm -hmm. but. It just goes to show you, just because you're humble does not mean you're not courageous. That's right. Because he took on, he took on the world in essence. The enemy mm -hmm. came as hard as it could come against him, and the man did not bend. And, and you he's know still what? Up. This is the hour, precious ones, that that you need to be hearing from individuals. We need to be hearing from individuals like that That's because right. we're at an hour that we're going to have to stand. That's right. Is that the truth? And when you go to Summit or watch Summit, you get that education. You, you do. get that encouragement. You know where where you need to be, and and you get to listen to the details that are very current. Yes. And that's and, one and of the things I've taken away from Summit every year. That's why I became such a, a an advocate and, and proponent yeah. for Summit. It is amazing, and they have a youth conference. Um, okay. I have actually, for the first time, I have great nieces and nephews who will be at the youth conference this year. Uh, it's exciting. ages 16 to 25. It starts on the 14th of June and goes through the 19th. They attend Summit. Mm -hmm. So they're actually there watching the live and the virtual. And uh, they have all these experiences. It's, it's exacted on the Colorado Christian campus. Okay. And it is just a wonderful experience for these young people, preparing them to answer the to liberal campuses. That's right. And answer the liberal cam campuses yeah. and what have answers for how they might be in the attempts to indoctrinate them to a non Christ based thought process. Exactly. It is. I, I can't say enough about that youth yeah. conference. Yeah. And finally, I have great nieces and nephews going. I am so excited pretty this excited. year. Yeah. yeah, pretty excited. I mean, well, Don, I think you need to make an effort to, to get up to that okay. summit yeah. this year. That sounds it's, like an amazing it, it really, It really is an amazing opportunity. Right. And, and what we're saying, guys, we all need to be doing everything we possibly can today to, to be encouraged to know that there are many others out there that are like-minded, that are Christ-minded. Mm -hmm. We are not Lone Rangers. That's right. And, and we need to encourage one another in that reality. Uh, so Don, coming back over here and, and coming out here to our uh, uh, hospital board, coming back to your personal work and so forth, uh, you're in the appraisal business. I'm, uh, yes. And uh, what in the world is going on in in Ector County in our well uh, in Midland and Ector County in West Mid Texas? Uh -huh. uh, you know, I thought going into COVID we would lose 10, 20 percent of value, and okay. we did lose value for maybe six months. A few months, and it leveled off and started going back up. And wow. you know, with with the uh, economic stimulus that the new these two plants that are going to be coming in out west of Odessa at Penwell. 
Mm -hmm. uh, one plant turns natural gas into gasoline that's mm -hmm. pollution free. That's mm -hmm. going to change the world. I mean, we, we know that the Democrats can't get electric cars done in 20 years. It, it can't happen right. in the plan they don't have. Right. But this is going to get it. This is going to change the world. Praise and God. it's coming out of Odessa. Mm -hmm. And uh, think, you know, the, the carbon black plant, the mm -hmm. zero emissions carbon, mm -hmm. carbon, carbon, carbon plant, not the carbon yeah. black, but the carbon black. We, well, we all think you. of the old carbon. You're showing your age <laughs> yeah. because uh, we all remember the old carbon black that's plant right. out on interstate. Yep. In that and, area. In that area. But that's, that, that's also coming and uh, golly, our economy here is just going to do better. Boom. Yeah. It's going to boom. It's Very gonna exciting. So you are seeing values not only holding, they have begun an incline. Oh yeah, they're, they're going up. I oh, mean, the high-end houses are creeping because that's hard. I had a high-end house that, that it came in at a terrible value because there was just no sales for it. It was a 5,500 square foot house. You get that kind of thing. And that particular house that day did terrible on value. and. That was about six months ago mm -hmm. in the middle of the COVID mess, but mm -hmm. uh, the sales are happening again and it's starting to change. And well, and, and of course, one of the things that I think we all need to be tuned to today is, is what is happening with inflation. This yeah. stimulus is driving mm -hmm. uh, an inflationary economy. Sure. Uh, and you're going to start to see that in home values as a, did you know last Friday that an eight foot two before was eleven dollars and twenty eight cents? Mm. And uh, there's a lot of those sticks in a house. So what happens in a, an appraisal? Yes. The the builders want to capture that money right now. Right. And they have to because that's what they're having to pay right, right. now. That's what they're when they paying get their the bundle, supplier. When they get their bundle, it is. Uh, we just talked about a bundle that was $20,000 more than it was just six months ago. Good and gracious. the builder has to capture that and it won't appraise. It because will the, not appraise. Well, because the prices are based off of houses that were built Sell, sold $20,000 less ago. And until that number is built up. in and catches in, and it's a slow process, it'll take a year or two. So, so what will that do to our current building? I, w I would say, I mean, common sense would tell you it'll slow down, but it's not. It's not slowing down. Interesting. The, you know, the builders are, are blowing and going, and they have orders for as much as they can do, so it's just going. Okay. And okay. I would say that it makes sense, but it's probably not going to happen, especially with the... You know, we're going to have six, 7,000 jobs to, to get this next plant going in, in the next what, four years. Do we have a time frame on some of that? Four years for that, okay. uh, for the natural okay. gas to gasoline plant. Okay. And uh, it's going to, you know, take 7,000 people to get it constructed so, over that uh -huh. amount of time. Uh, and they're, they're going to have to live somewhere. And, you yeah. know, what we have seen is a lot of travel trailers left town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in times where you can't get construction as fast as you need to, the travel traders build back option. up. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's what will happen, especially with workers over the next four years, because at the end of that four years, when it does get built, they're going to only have to have 300 people to run the plant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, the construction will be up and then the right. operation will be down on right. numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of things that we're looking at. but. And then navigating that. Right. I mean, even with hospital and so forth. I mean, how do we meet the needs? What well, and that's we've we've had meetings with them on that already. Yes. Uh, you know, hopefully one of the things that's fixing to happen with that is we're going to expand the ER. Okay. And that that's well, we want to keep this eight-minute thing running. So yeah. that's right. That's <laughs> well, right. Listen, that's here to stay. It's, it's yeah. These, these but people. we do want you to watch our taxes now. You know, when the hospital <laughs> district became. Uh, one of our taxing mm -hmm. entities, uh, that kind of changed the scene. You know, we, of our we, medical we work off of a 15 cent cap. That's right. Most hospitals, our size, work off of a 40 cent tax. 
Cap. Praise God. So y'all are getting a lot of good things done on a, a lot less tight lesson. belt. That's yes. right. On a tight belt. And we will keep it up. <laughs> we went from 60 days cash on hand when I started. Do what now? We went from 60 days cash on hand right. to 110 days cash on hand. From 10 to 100. 60. No, 60 from 60, 60 to, to 160 to 110. Okay, so mm -hmm. we've almost doubled. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we've almost doubled. And that's yeah. just in four years. And well, that's amazing. Especially that is amazing. through COVID. Yeah. That is amazing yeah. because most government agencies are not moving that direction. Most hospitals right. are in dire straits right now because of COVID. Yeah, exactly. They didn't handle things that they needed to during COVID. During COVID. Well, we're going to take a quick break here and we're going to come back and, you know, once again, won't you partner with GLC? Won't you come along beside? You know, we often talk about the work of Christ, the work of his body, and it takes everybody. If we are going to continue to, to grow GLC, if we're going to continue to, to uh, build the outreach, to, we have to move into that growth phase, and we need some individuals that are able to step up and do the $150 a month or more. Because when we, when we take that level, we can absolutely begin to add more transmitters. We can begin not only to repair those we have and put them in top shape, then we can begin to, you know, we can once again enter the arena of the satellites. But these are things that can only be done. We can only spread God's word and, and his message when we have the means and the wherewithal to do it. And we would ask you to please prayerfully consider what God would have you do to accomplish that end. So guys, as, as we come on down the line then and we navigate these next three or four years of new development and we continue to come out of this uh, pandemic, plandemic, what, whatever it may be at its core, uh, you know, what, what are y'all seeing over the next four years? Well, uh, for our hospital, what obviously we're we're going to get back to a, a place that we are handling 300 people a day in the ER. Uh, where I think we're averaging around 150 a day right now. Okay. But when we get back to that level, and we're 406 bed, I think 402 yes. bed uh, hospital. Okay. Um, when what has actually that, happened, uh, and, and I'm regressing here a little bit, but what's actually happened, Don, during the, the COVID thing with our hospital occupancies? Well, the governor put us in a situation where we had to have an allotment of beds available in case it went crazy. Okay. So literally, we had to, we had to shut Empty down. Out. We had to shut down day surgery and... You have that place ready, that complete building was basically just shut down and we had to have it ready in case we had a COVID overflow. Did we ever have that actually happen? No, no. we never got that close. That never happened. We never no. had a COVID overflow. No, I don't think we ever got much over a hundred COVID patients okay. at the but worst. But we were, we were set up uh, for how many? Oh, I think we were set up, I think that I think that we were supposed to have two times our capacity, so we were going to have to be able to handle 800 people wow. if it happened. Okay, I, I hope everybody heard that because this is not an uncommon scenario. Right. This is this is more what the nation looked like. This thing was blown to such a proportion. What what our hospital board members just told us, they had to set aside and be prepared to service up to 800 COVID patients, and yet the reality is they never probably exceeded 100. I don't think we ever exceeded 100. Yeah. And, the, and, and in that, just in one month, the month of April, we lost $40,000 just in that month that in surgery it. charges. Yeah, did you hear that? So what that did then, that, that was another economic expense that was incurred because 
of lost Resident. operation, lost surgeries and so forth, that, of people that needed surgery. That's right. But but this whole thing was, was uh, once again, I'm, I'm going to get a little personal here, but, but was blown so out of proportion that it negatively impacted every aspect of our lives. But there was an intent to drive fear, to motivate people to do things that they would not ordinarily do. You know, in fact, I shared a quote recently uh, that was held in the uh, trials following the episodes of Nazi Germany. And, uh, you know, was it, uh, oh gosh, what was his name? Bonhoeffer. Do I? Bon Herman. Bonhoeffer? No, no. it was Her okay. Herman Goring, I believe, yes. but but when he was when he was being questioned, uh, he was asked on the stand, "How did you get these people, these Germans, to do the things that they did? How did you get them to agree to the atrocities that were manifested?" And he said, "It was quite simple." We just invoked fear. That's right. Well, that's what we're talking about here. There was fear invoked and mandates made to place 800 of, or prepare for 800 of our rooms to meet a need that never outdistance 100. But the fear was built in the people for the other. Is this craziness? Now, guys, we we need. That's one of those places in this hour, and even that's as right. we move forward, that we have got to be able to stand when these narratives are pushed upon us. Does that make sense? It right. does. Because where I believe we are in Christendom is we have we have an assignment by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to be able to stand to fear not against the antics of the world and the fear that it wants to invoke. Mm -hmm. But we can only do that by the means God told Joshua to do it when he was to take the promised land. What did he tell him? Multiple times and be strong, be strong, be courageous. Be strong, be courageous. Be strong, be courageous. And how was he told to be strong and courageous? Do you remember living, that? Living in God, living in Christ. Meditating. Our, yeah, meditate. Meditating on the Word of God day and night that we might observe to do according to all that is written therein, not turning to the right or to the left, not being discouraged, right. not being dismayed, for the Lord our God is with us. That's why we don't have to fear. Who is our healer? You know, that's what we talked about earlier and what you, the heart of both of you is for sure, and, and the number of individuals working in our current hospital administrators is caring for people administering healing and we all know where healing comes from yeah. that, well, that's right i was quite excited this week and don doesn't even he's not aware of what i'm about to say but i was invited to a residency graduation and you? Um, i asked if we could bring and present full gideon bibles to each one of the new residents and the response i got from the gentleman who invited me who is uh, the doctor and overseer was a resounding yes and oh, by the way, I would like one also. Wow. That to me says a lot for, to, of the residency program that we have going on. Yeah. And it also says a lot in the fact that we have to look beyond whether they're, we're Texans or not Texans or where we're from, because these people have stepped out in confidence and um, we have many believers, brothers and sisters, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in this sight. Amen. And we've got to understand that that's the case and that we have leadership within um, these programs that are mm. also uh, guided there by God. 
So you didn't know that today when I asked you. <laughs> praise God. Praise yeah. God right. It was a yeah. praise. That's very it was a real praise. Yeah. And so Eddie and I will be attending, and we've got permission for him to present the, the, new, the resident graduates with Gideon full Bibles. Wow. Because doctors receive full Bibles. Yeah. So there you go. Wow, that's exciting. So yeah. well, uh, talk to us about the residency program. I mean, okay. well, Te either Te both. Texas Tech is Texas Tech is on campus with us, and mm -hmm. we've had that relationship for many years, mm -hmm. uh, and we're growing that back. That's that's another thing that's taken a hit. I, we we lost uh, the Texas Tech lost the surgical residency program a couple of years ago. We just got uh, that back in to legislature and approved. Awesome. Uh, I this believe, week, yes, this it was last just week, this and week. I believe that that'll Praise be God, that going is to the good governor's news. desk. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'll be Brooke, coming back. Brooks Landgraf called with the information as our as our uh, time together this week uh, awesome. started. So and, yes, you know, with the Texas Tech program there and being a teaching hospital, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it gives us the ability to do other things certainly uh, and go to new levels or other levels. Right. We were a trauma too, mm -hmm. you know. One of the things we had to look at was where we were putting money when we lost $40 million in one month. And we were spending $3 million a month for air, just to literally have doctors on call mm -hmm. to have that trauma two program. For the You're saying two. air transportation? What are you no, saying? No, no, I'm saying just to be a level two trauma. Okay. So to be a level two trauma, which, which means that you're able to handle specific trauma cases that you can't handle at a level three level. Okay. They'd be Midlands level three, they would transfer on to us as level two. Okay. We're, we're the first transfer. If it's beyond us or the capabilities of our hospital or our doctors, then it would be transferred to level one, which would normally go to Lubbock first. Okay. So in that, that's, and, and especially now that we've got the surgical program back, back it gives us another step to, to work towards a five-star program and to work back towards a level two trauma. That's That's especially awesome. in the situation where we're looking to soon expand the ER and the trauma care mm -hmm. in that uh, about a $30 million project that we're looking at. And Don, let, let me follow up. When he said air, what he's talking about is we're pay we were paying doctors just to be at home to be on call and available, well, that was costing us a lot of money per per wow. hour. And we were paying them because that's what you have to have to have a, a level two. Yeah. And so they, the prior board members, including Don, opted to go back to a level three, but we're working toward that, regaining the level two. Mm -hmm. And it's because we will have more qualified residents that have come In out place. of this program. Yeah. So it really it, has, it takes a surgical program yes. to, to be there. And uh, it's important for us to be there for the people of our area, especially working mm -hmm. to be a five star hospital mm -hmm. to go to a level two trauma. Mm -hmm. which so this is this is a specific goal that this board has set. Yes. We want to become for Odessa, Texas, Hector County and the Permian Basin, a five star, star rated facility. Mm -hmm. And we're we're working up that level right now, mm -hmm. and you've never ever had better care than you've got right now at Medical Center Hospital in Odessa, Texas. Wow, it's never great. better people either. I assure you, you've never seen a better, more committed Christian uh, team well, of that's directors. Right. That's well, right. you know, when you have individuals that love the Lord mm -hmm. and love their neighbors as they love themselves. You have the presence of God, don't you? That's right. That's right. Things That's work right. and they work well. And, and they, you know what's amazing is these people, and especially during the COVID time, these people go in a room with a COVID patient dying of COVID. I'm, I'm taking a friend of mine to lunch tomorrow. He had the Brazilian form of COVID. There was okay. only eight people in the United States with the Brazilian and the other seven are gone. He survived. He survived it. I'm taking him to lunch tomorrow, and, and I'm excited about that, but uh, I'm excited that he's alive. Amen. Jerry Shoner is his name. and Yes, he's a, a young he's man. A, he's a great man. Uh, yeah, he's young. He's 35 or six years That's old. That's what I was thinking. And uh, he's a good man of God, too, and he he's, knows, and he's told that the Lord that, that God God's through this, and there's a lot, a lot of things for him to have to 
to bring to the That's table right. through these kind of things. And That's yeah. right. God uses it all. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is very exciting. Very it exciting, is. ladies. So, Don, um, uh, this term is for how long? Four years. Four years. And so we've got, uh, we're, we're out running. Mm -hmm. we, we're, how, how many terms are you uh, uh, desiring <laughs> to serve? I'm going to serve until I'm not useful. And when I become not useful, I'm going to take the hint and, and move on. You know, it takes a lot to, you know, for somebody that's an electrical engineer uh, or, and, then, and then on to a real estate person. Yeah, I, th I thought that was fun while ago. Guys, before we got started here, uh, Don said, you know, I used, to, I used to come out here some. He said, and I'm trying to remember what, but Don uh, is an electrical engineer. I guess. Well, I, I never got my degree, but yes, I worked in the electrical engineering, engineering field. Engineering field. And so he did work, I guess, out here yeah. Uh, yeah. on some of the equipment and some mm -hmm. of those things, I guess, in the early days, you said, That's maybe. Right. I, yeah, it's been 20 or 30 years. Yeah. 20 to 30 so, years. So, you know, once again, uh, GLC, Primetime Broadcasting, has just been a part of our community for a long time. Long, long time. Yes. A very integral part of our community and I share that often out here guys Mission Messiah you know I'm sure God had other ways he could do it but he doing did not do it another way he used GLC mm -hmm. he used God's learning channel as an impetus and as a partner with the work that we did at Mission Messiah all those years that mm -hmm. Alan Tommy would have us come out and come on and share and some of our girls would come and share their testimonies right. of the amazing things we, our ladies manned the phone banks for uh, a number of years and prayed with people. And, you know, that's just what GLC is. That's, that's who right. it is. It gives us a venue, just like this evening, to hear from, from you precious people that are so engaged in our community and reporting to us that we can be encouraged. There are good things going on being done by good people. That's right. Well, and, and might I add that um, during the COVID situation, there were many people that, um, that delayed uh, procedures that needed to be done. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I'm here to tell you I was one of them. And all those procedures need to be caught up on. If you have preventative medicine things that need to happen, colonoscopies, breast exams, anything that is a preventive, preventative medicine, the hospital and the doctors are back up and running, and you need to go ahead and give those calls. Move forward. Get those, get those done. Um, the services are there. They're ready. And the hospital is at a premium mm. on, on its services and skills. That's so it, it is. And, and I believe that God has continued to bless us because we've been very um, diligent about what's happened at the hospital prior to my being there. I've only been in there a few weeks, so right. guess what's going to happen yeah. now? We all may not know that we have this common thread as well. Did y'all know that my dad served on the hospital board? Really? Yes, he did. I didn't yes, know that. Did. Many, wow. many years ago. Wow. But, uh, he sure did. Hmm. He sure did. Yeah. That's before it was in uh, the hospital district. The hospital. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, district in the taxing district. That was pre. But That's uh, neat. anyway, uh, That's he great. certainly was. So hey, more in common. Yeah. It's funny how the Lord knits things, things and together. weaves things together. You know, that's that's one of the things that I love about both of you is that we have long-standing relationships mm -hmm. but again it's because we love our community mm -hmm. we've That's loved right. each other our community has loved us and been so good to us on so many fronts you know I, Don how, how did you and I first encounter was it an Emmaus was it our I probably woman? was Emmaus and then when I was getting my master's in theology I had to be in a work some, program, and, and I, I taught at the Mission, Mission Messiah for two years. You sure did. I taught once a week, every week, two That's years. Right. And That's exactly right. You know what? So, I so tell let me you tell you, this guy's not just an, uh, an electrical genius guru kind of guy. <laughs> He's an amazing Bible teacher. Let me just tell you that. You know, uh, one of the neatest things that, 
And I, I just talked to a, a lady the other day. Uh, I'm on the board of directors of the Women's Center yes. for the Jesus House. Right. Uh, the Women's Center at Jesus House. And we've got women, we take women there that uh, are kind of in a gap. They don't mm. have a place to live. Um, they might have children, probably do have children. And we've got a gap for that. And we have everything that they're going to need to be successful. And that's the whole point to the time that they're going to be there is just to mm -hmm. teach them or get them to a place that they can be successful. And, and, and Don, how long is the program over there? It's, it's, uh, a, a, it's, a, it's set up to be a, a year, but okay. not everybody's going to need a year. And, okay. not er and some people might need more than a year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's set up as a year, but I think that's a, a guideline. Uh, I mean, we all know that not everybody needs the same thread. Right. But uh, one of the things, one of the ladies made a, uh, a comment about how that this lady just looked different. I said, when I used to teach at Mission Messiah, I got the new girls, and they would come in rough. You know, I'd get them on the first day a lot of times, and they weren't, they weren't happy all the time to be there, and they might be rough. But I literally got to see the complexion on their face change yeah. as God took them yep. and changed them. Oh. It's an it's amazing oh, thing to see someone's complexion actually change. change. In fact, mm -hmm. I've said for years, I have watched women become beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's the complexion. It's, the, it's a radiance it's that begins to bloom. The hardness. The yeah. hardness just... Oh. The anxiety, Drops. the yeah. fears, the anger, the all of those things begin to defensiveness, dissipate. defensiveness, mm -hmm. insecurity. That's right. It's all so much is rooted in insecurity, which is born out of a lack of relationship with security himself. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Now we'll carry on right there. Tell us a little bit more about. Uh, what's going on over on that project right now? Well, it, it's a great project. We got uh, areas for the kids to stay in. There's individual rooms for uh, the mother and her kids to live mm -hmm. as a family away mm -hmm. from a shared kitchen, shared living areas, mm -hmm. uh, work areas, and uh, areas for you to go and just be alone, pray. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's set up to just take women, give them God, teach them how to do a checkbook, or we've got uh, a lady that just graduated from high school, Okay. another lady that's going to be graduating from high school, mm -hmm. get them back in the workforce, mm -hmm. teach them skills and how to live life and how to handle issues that happen to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And just show them that we can get past the little things in life if, if your foot falls off. Yeah. You can get past it. Yeah. 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 Yep. Praise God. Praise God. What, now, tell us again the name of the program. I'm going to mess it up, but it, it's, it's the Women's Center at Jesus House. Okay, the Women's Center at Jesus House. And, of course, Donnie Kiker Donnie over Kiker's there has been, has been heading Jesus up House. Jesus House for a long time, feeding a lot of our, our homeless population yes. in Odessa. Uh, what else? But this has, this has been born out of that ministry. That ministry, correct? right. Yeah, and, and I mean, they're looking at other things, too. They're That's looking right. at, at building many houses to get mm -hmm. home, some homeless people off the streets. That mm -hmm. There's some homeless people out there that are actually homeless because they don't have a place to go or the ability to get there. Right. And not, not everybody mm -hmm. has a mental illness that's homeless. Mm -hmm. So that, they're, they're looking at that. And... Uh, Donnie's just done a lot of things over the years, and it's been uh, well, well Donnie, received in our community. Donnie Feeds Kiker, a lot of people. He's a he's a precious man. Yes, he yes. loves the Lord. You know, uh, once again, these circles. Donnie used to be our FedEx delivery man yes. over at Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, and the, so UPS. we. Yes. UPS. UPS. Boy, I could oh, get in boy. trouble because yeah. it was, was UPS. He was a man in brown. And That's he was, right. Actually, he was my neighbor on Golder <laughs> along with uh, Dick and Amelia Salisbury. We all lived within less than a block from one another. No kidding. Yes, no on kidding. Golder and 24th Street Okay. for years. Well, you're so. exactly right. It was UPS. UPS. Donnie, if you're watching, please forgive me, Donnie. I won't put the FedEx <laughs> yeah, on you. but uh, I'm sure I got the name wrong somehow. <clears throat> but yeah. 
He'll but let you know. Still work. He'll let you yeah. know. Still but but we're <laughs> we're lifting you up out here tonight, yeah. Donnie, yeah. and we do thank you for everything that you do in our community and your love for the Lord and your That's love right. for people again. Amen. Uh, as these two that I'm you, sitting you know, with tonight. Jesus' house is on Sixth Street in Odessa. Right. They feed people early in the mornings. They feed people. Uh, Every meal, basically, yeah. Uh, yeah. and they, they also, Donnie's got a, a situation set up for you to be able to use the facility if you've got a need and, mm -hmm. and or if you uh, want to feed some people, there's always places for you to work over there, so yeah, all you have to do Volunteers, is Volunteers, that's the way, I mean, Jesus' house has been driven like Mishmasai, mm -hmm. volunteers, right. mm -hmm. volunteers, you know, and, and I'm convinced and I think you would attest to this, both of you. Yes. I, I am convinced that one of the most profound, impactful things for these ladies and this amazing transformation that we have witnessed all these years has been them watching the love of volunteers. Yes. Guys like Don Hallmark, that would come week after week. Mm -hmm. Ladies that uh, like our teachers, like Miss Celia, you know, mm -hmm. has been coming for 20 plus years right. every week, every week. Well, when, when an individual that's been hurting and has not ever known the love of the Lord like that, to see that, it makes a difference. It, it reveals to them a father, a heavenly father that loves them and desires good for them. Amen. And guys, that's what we've been here talking about tonight. Kathy Rhodes, Don Hallmark, Donnie Cacker, myself, we love people. We love the Lord. We love you. And we know that many of you watching love the Lord and love one another. And this is an hour that we need to be working together to effectuate the love of our Father in more places. You know, if you're, if you're in a situation where you're not feeling like you're doing all you need to be doing for God or you're just not feeling good in God right now, yeah. go find some place to That's plug right. in. That's a put in. Put in a week feeding homeless people yeah. at the Jesus house. There you go. And, and you'll, you'll be find blessed, a love you? that you, you didn't even know existed. You'll find a fire. A fire. That's right. You'll find a fire. There will, there will be a passion light right. within you. That's right. Will there not? And it will change your life. And it will change and it will your change life. your complexion. Exactly. And you're never too old and you're never too young. You're not. To be involved. You have to let God lead you and do exactly what the Holy Spirit tells you to do in each step of the way. One of the neatest things is seeing families, dads That's bring right. their families to come to down and To help feed. volunteer. That's right. Well, guys, I want to thank you all again for coming and being a part of this. We want to ask all of you, join in this effort right now in our onward and upward movement. We've got work to do. We've got kingdom business right. to take care Amen. of. And we need to do it at the hospital level. We need to do it in our educational system. We need to do it in our, our housing industry. We've got a lot of places to serve today. Won't you join in and be a part of all that God is doing in this hour? We love you, and we ask God's richest blessings to rest upon you.